Okay, this is a reading. And uh, I'm going to read from uh, an article called R Outrageous. The comedy historian Cliff Nesteroff, 43, visited the New York Public Library recently for an event at the Celeste Bartos Forum. The discussion with the comedian and podcaster Mark Marin about Nesteroff's new book, Outrageous, A History of Showbiz and the Culture Wars. A former stand-up, I retired at 26, Nesteroff, who is wiry and feisty with glasses and a bald head, has written three books about comedy history. He met Marin more than a decade ago when their paths crossed for Shecky Green, related reasons, and has appeared on his podcast. Nesteroff, who grew up in British Columbia and lives in Hollywood, was new to NYPL and arrived early. He stopped into Treasures, an exhibit of the highlights from the library's vast collection, a draft of the Declaration of Independence, a rehearsal photo from West Side Story, Cole Porter's cigarette case, a lock of Beethoven's hair on the marble, majestic main floor. Nesterov, whose book adorn is adorned with headlines like Beetle Bailey, censored for spoofing army brass, and Frito Bandito is subject of protest and crammed with arcane facts, seems startled to encounter a pop cultural detail with which he was unfamiliar. No idea who the New Yorkans are, he said, peering into a vitrine. How do you pronounce it? Nesterov became a historian inadvertently. I saw every movie between the age of 12 and 18, every movie that somebody has heard of. Then all the B movies you hadn't heard of, he said. He also collected vintage vinyl in thrift stores, including comedy albums by comics who were considered too dirty for TV and are less known today. But their records were bestsellers. If you look at the Billboard charts in the 60s, Rusty Warren has three different albums in the top 100 next to like Elvis and the Beatles and the Beach Boys. She made up these party records, knockers up, more knockers up, knockers up 76. So I was curious about these people and began investigating, he said. Most comedians have an interest in comedians who came before them. Nesterov strolled past a display of Toscanini's batons and a manuscript of Mozart's Symphony No. 32 in G major then admired a mid-century pocket handbook from the Mattachine Society. For this book, I will research without actually having a goal, he said. I would just put in quotes like disgusting comedian. That was very effective or offensive comedian or vulgar comedian or immoral comedian or disgusting TV show or terrible TV show. This yielded many letters to editors. So much fun, he said. I've never been so offended as on the Carol Burnett show last night when she made fun of the elderly. I was watching it with my grandmother. I will never watch it again. Nesterov's book posits that arguments about oversensitivity and humorlessness around comedy are as old as comedy itself. People get apocalyptic today about things. And everybody takes it very seriously. But I feel like in decades to come, it'll sort of look like those letters do now. Like a comical thing. Outrageous details, reactions to bigoted entertainment too. Some angry letters have been justified. Nesterov gestured at a poster. The New York World's Fair 1939 is where television debuted for the American public. 
he said. And they tested the transmission with a blackface performance of Amos and Andy, a display about Annie prompted insights about the comic strip's right-wing origins. He hated FDR, Harold Gray, despised the New Deal and would put little messages in Annie. Daddy Warbucks was the character that he sympathized with. Hey, I see the whiz, he went on. He praised Nipsey Russell, then examined some artifacts from the 1975 Broadway production. A not uncommon reaction to the whiz, he said, was, what is this woke bullshit? An all-black wizard of Oz? What is the world coming to? People thought it was sacrilegious. Sound check beckoned downstairs in the green room. Marin awaited in an olive drab shirt. Hey, man, he said to Nesterov. Hey, buddy, Nesterov said. They hugged. The Albert Brooks thing. It was worth the buildup. Marin had recently interviewed Brooks for his podcast after years of trying. It was wild, said Marin. They sat across from each other at a snack table, drinking LaCroix and swapping anecdotes about the Friars Club, old Paul Lynn clips, and the socio-political prescience of Frank Zappa, Marin, said that during the evening's event, we don't want to get into you and me talking intellectually about stuff. They should talk instead about the fact that minstrel C was really the first form of American show business. Popular reactions against ethnic stereotyping, controversies involving Lenny Bruce, the Smothers Brothers, all in the family, and the PMRC Senate hearings, the John Birch Society, the Fairness Document Doctrine, the rise of radio shock jocks, the Koch Brothers, news becoming entertainment and so on. You actually can pretty much say whatever you want. It's just whether or not you want to shoulder the consequences, Marin said. I'm very skeptical when somebody is constantly repeating words like freedom and liberty because so frequently it's somebody who's opposed to those two things, Nesterov said. Had Albert Brooks ever offended anybody? Yes, Nesterov said on Jack's Parr's show in 1973, alongside Truman Capote, according to an angry letter, the evening with Jack Parr ended with guest Albert Brooks wildly waving his hands and yelling, marijuana. ending stream.